Good morning. Welcome to the Breakfast Biscuit for Friday, August the 9th, 2024. It is 6.05 a.m. You've heard of yippee ki yay yay Well, it's yippee Kai friday Woohoo! I hope you have a great weekend plan. This morning, it's like Greek to me. That's our title, and it's from Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Your weather rolled in this morning, 81 degrees on the way to 97 for a high 97 for a high bright sunshine a la high pressure dome for the next two weeks. Bad news is it's going to be Africa hot. The good news is should keep the hurricanes at bay for us. So there is not an appreciable chance of rain and light northeasterly winds. A little bit odd uh, to go with that. So again, let me invite you this Sunday to our home in the Hollow Dome, SeaTex Church at 10 a.m. Holiday Inn on Walden Road. We will be in the series called Jesus Conversations with Jesus. And this week we look at Jesus and the centurion and we'll answer the question, what characteristic made the centurion understand Jesus and what great compliment did Jesus give the centurion and why? So here we go. It's like Greek to me. There have been days, many of them, when I've wondered if it was all worth it. I'm talking about all the schooling. I don't mean the school of life. I don't mean the school of hard knocks. I mean higher education, grueling, expensive, endless higher education, particularly higher theological education. Ten years of it, to be exact. Four foreign languages for the biblical studies route uh, to the Ph.D. I was there to study the Bible and how to preach the Bible. And at the end of the day, you wonder if something could have been a different or better about that curriculum. But to quote the old saying, you get what you get, you don't throw a fit. That's how it is. Um, but I have to admit I'm grateful. When you've mastered the biblical languages and the theological languages, it just adds a lot to what you understand and can understand on your own. And the following is one of the passages that has always made it worth it. Here's the King James. Ready? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery, note that word, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Okay, that's King James. Let's focus on our, our phrase for this morning that's uh, really our point from the New Living Translation, which is one of the more modern actual translations, and it is focused on dynamic equivalency rather than the wooden theory of translation. Wooden theory of translation is word for word for word. You got one word in Greek, you got one word in English, has to be that way. Dynamic equivalency is uh, trying to create the same uh, gestaltic phenomenon uh, in language that the original language created. You ready? Verse 6. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Now, there's quite a bit of difference between robbery and something to cling to. I say neither one of them is good enough. My own personal translation would be he considered it not something to be grasped or prioritized above God's will. Jesus was willing to humble himself and not hold on to anything that got in the way of the will of the Father. Even the glory that Jesus had. Even the glory that he was rightfully due. He considered not equality with God something that he should hold on to instead of doing the will of the Father. And thereby we have all been saved. What do you have in your life that is the equivalent of equality with God? I dare say nothing. Yet there are, from time to time in spiritual warfare, things that can become idols to us, are there not? Things that become more important than God, things that become more important than God's will. Are you a follower of Jesus? I dare say you are. At least you're interested in it if you're not already. Are you a follower of Jesus? His word has unspeakable power and wisdom. To be the Christ, he thought it not something to be held on to or to become the enemy of God's will to be equal with God. Why would you let anything become an idol or set itself up in opposition to God while following Jesus? Let's do a little self-examination this weekend. Let's call it preparation for worship on Sunday morning. 
in preparation of our hearts to appear before the Lord in prayer when we turn off this phone or turn off the device that you're going to watch the biscuit on. Let's do a little self-examination. Number one, is there a comfort level in your life that you're unwilling to give up for the cause of Christ? It's a pretty pointed question, isn't it? I'm going to hear it one more time. Is there a comfort level that you're not willing to give up? Is there a danger you're not willing to endure? Is there a level of exertion that you will not undertake? Is there a humility to which you're not willing to subject yourself? If so, there's your idol. So I want you to uh, put your name where my name occurs. We're going to do a little exercise together. Nathan, comma, or John or Susie, comma, Nathan, being a follower of Christ, considered nothing worth holding on to that would get in the way of the will of God. Would that statement be true of you? Let it be so. Let me pray for us. Father, we come to you this morning just asking you to help us realize what we've got in our Lord Jesus Christ, who thought equality with God was not something to be grasped or held on to instead of God's will. Lord, I pray that you would make in us the same exact heart that prioritizes the will of the Father above everything else for your glory and for the blessing of your people. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So, may the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And remember, as always, I love you. I'm praying for you. And I'll see you right back here bright and early Monday morning. God bless you.